Thank you for subscribing to this channel. This is a reading part C practice video. According to the question, what problem is mentioned in the fourth paragraph? Now, if you read the highlighted section, Dixon Woods and her team spend time in hospitals to try to understand which systems are in place and how they are used and not only does she finds differences in approaches between hospitals, but also between units and even between shifts. She also found that, standardization and harmonization are two of the most urgent issues we have to tackle. By reading this, you should have understood that the problem mentioned in the paragraph is lack of standardization. Therefore, option D is the correct answer. Let's look at the next question. What point about patient safety is the writer making by quoting Dixon Woods's comparison with climate change? 
Now if you read the highlighted section, Dixon Woods compares the issue of patient safety to that of climate change, in the sense that it is a problem of many hands, with many actors, each making a contribution towards the outcome, and there is difficulty in identifying where the responsibility for solving the problem lies. From this, you should have understood that the writer has the opinion that it is unclear who should be responsible to solve the problem like climate change. Therefore, option B is the correct answer. Let's look at the next question. Why does the writer quotes Dixon Woods's reference to intensive care beds? Now, if you read the highlighted section, nowhere is this more apparent than the issue of alarm fatigue, according to Dixon Woods. Each bed in an intensive care unit typically generates 160 alarms per day, caused by machine that is not integrated. You have to assemble all the kit around an intensive care bed manually, she explains. It doesn't come built as one like an aircraft cockpit. This is not something a hospital can solve alone. It needs to be solved at the sector level. In this section, the example of intensive care bed is given to show a very common problem that hospitals face, which needs to be solved at the sector level. Therefore, option B is the correct option. Let's look at the next question.
what difference between healthcare and engineering is mentioned in the final paragraph? Now if we read the section. Dixon Woods has turned to Professor Clarkson in Cambridge's Engineering Design Center to help. Fundamentally, my work is about asking how we can make it better and what could possibly go wrong, explains Clarkson. We need to look through the eyes of the healthcare providers to see the challenges and to understand where tools and techniques we use in engineering may be of value. There is a difficulty, he concedes. There's no formal language of design in healthcare. Do we understand what the need is? Do we understand what the requirements are? Can we think of a range of concepts we might use and then design a solution and test it before we put it in place? From this, you should understand that Professor Clarkson in Cambridge's Engineering Design Center mentions how he works to solve a problem. He also mentions that there is no formal language of design in healthcare like in engineering. So, option D is the correct answer. 